Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. For those of you who might have missed it not that long ago, I put together a Radeon RX 5600 XT roundup featuring a dozen models, so just about every 5600 XT in existence. That video included loads of testing, graphs and data, and by the end of it, I've been told that some viewers weren't clear on which models were the best, or perhaps more importantly, which one they should buy. Therefore, this is going to be a quick breakdown that should steer you in the right direction for your 5600 XT purchase. So let's get to it. I'll be honest with you guys, when it comes to 5600 XT graphics cards, this is about the only category that matters, and that's because the 5600 XT is a cut down 5700, which is a lower clocked 5700 XT, and therefore you don't want to go spending 5700 money on a fancy 5600 XT. Radeon RX 5700 series graphics cards have been known to go on sale for as low as $300 US. In fact, at the time of making this video, there is an ASUS Dual Fan Evo model selling for just $310 over on Newegg. And you can also find the MSI and ASRock base models fetching $330. That being the case, $300 US really is the absolute most you should consider spending on a 5600 XT, and anything above $300 is an automatic write-off. Thankfully, two of the absolute best examples, the Sapphire Pulse and Gigabyte Gaming OC, are priced near AMD's $280 US MSRP. Both can be had for $290 US, and in terms of cooling performance, they rival premium models from the likes of ASUS, MSI, and PowerColor. Now, of the two, my preference would be the Sapphire Pulse. In terms of quality, it just feels like it's a step up from the Gigabyte Gaming OC. And quite interestingly, when looking at user reviews, people seem to be having a better experience overall with the Pulse. I'm really not sure why cards like the Gigabyte Gaming OC might be more susceptible to black screen issues and other bugs that seem to have plagued AMD GPUs for over a year now. Unfortunately, we have little to no experience with these issues, so it's hard for us to really gauge just how bad the situation is. We've made a few videos talking about it though in the past. But I'll admit, after seeing the verified user reports on Newegg, it does make me a little bit hesitant to recommend any 5600 XD graphics card but I also find it puzzling how a card like the Gaming OC can have so many unhappy user reports, while the Pulse has almost none. And then in my own experience, both have worked flawlessly. Even more puzzling is the fact that the issues reported for the Gaming OC seem to be driver related, but again, nowhere near the volume of issues have been reported with the Pulse. So taking all that into account, I feel the Sapphire Pulse is the absolute best value Radeon RX 5600 XT graphics card you can buy, but if unavailable in your region, I recommend the Gigabyte Gaming OC, because as I said, it's been great in my experience. Now, if I had my free pick of any one of the many 5600 XT graphics cards that I've tested, and I don't have to pay the actual retail price, then I think I would take MSI's Gaming X. It is a massive graphics card and it borrows its cooler from the 5700 XT version, so it's kind of overkill for a 5600 XT. That said, it's not that much better than the Sapphire Pulse, which is a bit shocking really, given that the Gaming X does weigh almost 70% more. Still, the massive heatsink means you can turn the fans right down and still keep the hotspot below 80 degrees. It's also just a menacing looking graphics card and while looks really aren't that important, it's a nice bonus, I guess. Unfortunately though, the 5600 XT Gaming X isn't a product you should buy at the current asking price of $330 US. It simply makes no sense because as I said earlier, you can purchase an RX 5700 series graphics card for that price. The RX 5700 isn't just better because it's a little bit faster, you also get an 8GB frame buffer opposed to 6GB with the 5600 XT. Unfortunately, it seems that there are a number of good quality 5600 XT graphics cards, just like the Gaming X, that are priced so high that it makes no sense to purchase them. Other models, for example, include the ASUS Tough Gaming, the ASUS Strix, the XFX Thick 3 Pro, and the PowerColor Red Devil. But I make mention of these models as they're all good quality 5600 XTs and if any of them are available for less than $300 US and are equal to or cheaper than the Pulse, then they're certainly worth purchasing.
The vast majority of 5600 XT graphics cards will take up three slots in your system, and most are fairly long. Take the Gigabyte Gaming OC as an example. And then we have the Pulse, that's one of the more compact designs, in the sense that it measures just 254 millimeters long, but again, it will require three slots. If you're after a dual slot card, your options are quite limited, and we recommend avoiding cheaper models such as the Gigabyte WinForce OC. The best dual slot 5600 XT that we've come across is without question the Powercolor Red Dragon. It's by far the best performing model that takes up just two slots, and it is relatively compact at just 240 millimeters long. Unfortunately, the Red Dragon is currently priced at $300, which it's not ideal, but it's not a bad price either, I suppose, given that it is a compact 5600 XT. The WinForce OC model is $20 cheaper, but in my opinion, it'd need to be at least $40 cheaper before I'd consider buying it over the Red Dragon. The cooler just really isn't very good on the Gigabyte card. There is, however, a second option that's even smaller, and it too comes from Powercolor. Just recently, the company released an ITX model called the Powercolor RX 5600 XT ITX. So that's nice, a simple to the point name there. I've actually managed to get the ITX model on hand for a little bit of testing. And as you might imagine, it does run a little bit hotter than the larger models. Still, with the fan spinning at 1600 RPM, which is reasonably quiet and a peak hotspot temperature of 90 degrees, it isn't terrible given the card's size. The memory and VRM temperatures are also surprisingly good. The GDDR6 memory peaked at 76 degrees, while the VRM temperature reached just 71 degrees, and that is after an hour of gameplay. So pretty respectable temperatures, again, especially given the card's size. So overall, pretty impressive stuff from a tiny single fan 5600 XT graphics card, and I've got no issue recommending it for compact mini ITX builds. It's pretty easy to say, just buy the Sapphire Pulse, it's the best 5600 XT. And while that might be true, I mean, I've said basically just that a few minutes ago in this very video, the Pulse might not be an option for everyone, either because it's simply not available in your region or the pricing just isn't as competitive as it is in the US and Australia. So that being the case, it might just be easier to tell you guys which models you need to avoid. Thankfully, most 5600 XTs are pretty good, which wasn't the case with the first wave of 5700 series graphics cards. Anyway, I'd recommend you actively avoid the XFX Thick 2 Pro, MSI Mech, and Gigabyte WinForce models. The XFX Thick 2 Pro suffers from high hotspot temperatures, while the Mech and WinForce models are loud, and despite that, they still run quite hot. I'm also going to tentatively recommend you avoid the ASRock Challenger D as well. That's one of the few models I haven't been able to test, as ASRock refused to supply it, and I couldn't just go and purchase it locally because stock doesn't exist. So, given the fact that ASRock tried to hide the test results, I can only conclude that it probably sucks. It's also selling well below the MSRP already, so that's not a particularly good sign. And those are our Radeon RX 5600 XT picks. Hopefully those of you who have been requesting this content over the past month or so are satisfied and now know which model you should be buying. Of course, for those of you who found this video first and would like more information on the design and performance of each model, then be sure to check out our 5600 XT roundup. I'll link to that in the video description. And if you found this video useful, then feel free to give it a like and you can subscribe if you haven't already. And if you'd like to become more involved with the channel directly and support the work we do here at Harbour Unboxed, then consider checking out our Patreon account. The link for that is in the video description. You get access to our private Discord server, our monthly live streams, Q&As, behind the scenes videos, all that sort of stuff. So if you're interested, feel free to check that out. But above all else, thank you very much for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.